everyone! Welcome to the Back to Engineering YouTube channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up these SO101 Le Robot Arms from Hugging Face that I've ordered and 3D printed and assembled myself. Let's get started with the coolest application of physical AI we've seen on the channel so far. But first, a quick introduction. The robot is a project from Hugging Face, and Hugging Face is a very well-known community within the data science AI ML world, where you can find open source models, data sets, and a lot of resources for the community to help you get started really quickly, help you collaborate and build on work that already exists. The robot is pretty much all of these things, but for robotics or specifically for physical AI. They provide some designs for the actual physical robots that you can use along with all the software that goes with it, a standardized way to collect and store and visualize data and a way to train new models and build new policies so you can teach your own robots how to learn and how to do new tasks. They already have a lot of examples that are open source, like having robots trained to make coffee, fold laundry, or do a lot of other tasks. And with some of the foundation models that they released, you can also just add a little bit of extra training data to make your specific task a reality. And to be able to access all of that, we first need to put together our own robot. So I'll be putting together the SO101 arms. I'm putting all the links in the description so you can follow along. We're going to walk through it together for installing the leader. We have the servo board that we're going to use to connect all the different drivers. Plug the servo board in and then we're going to connect the servo board with the USB cable to my device, which is my Windows computer. Then you need to detect which driver this has been connected into. The most straightforward way to do it is to have a Linux device. However, if you don't, there are some ways around it. So I have a Windows desktop computer and I've installed a VSL Ubuntu drive on it. So you don't have to do like a dual booth or a virtual machine. I find that this is the easiest way to still do everything you normally would with your files, but also have access to the Linux ecosystem and everything you need to do. So I've connected a VSL and I've connected it into my VS code so I can just run it from here. You can see that it's connected and running in Ubuntu and all the commands work. There's just a few extra steps you need to do. So for example, when you want to start setting it up, so we're going to run the live robot find ports and you see that we have these two over here and then we're going to unplug the leader and it's been detected as ACM one. So then we can plug it back in and now we have to plug them into the driver one by one and give them the IDs for the follower. That was very simple because all the different motors that we used were actually the same type of motor 16.5 kilo ones i just identify them with the number on the back because all the boxes look the same but you will notice that for the leader at least you have like different amounts of torque or power that they use for different joints for the follower it's all six of them are exactly the same and for the leader we have this table that shows what the gear ratio should be used. So we're going from the bottom all the way to the top when we register them, starting with the gripper. Okay, connect the gripper. This will be our gripper. So we're going to plug this in here and then plug it into the servo board. Press enter. Gripper is set. And then we got We have them in order. All right, it's time for the 3D printed part. There are three ways to get these. The files are open source and available. So you can print them at home. You can order them already pre-printed in a package from different vendors such as Seed, which I've worked with on this channel before. Or you can use a 3D printing service, send them the files and have it done, which is what I've gone with. So I want to thank PCBWay for printing these for me. I've uploaded the files into their system. It was really simple. I picked the colors, the material and everything in between. And then they sent them over to my house as a way to support this project and this video. So thank you very much PCB way for helping me out with this. And there we have it. You should have all these parts. I have the leader in pink and I have the follower in blue so I can kind of tell them apart. And we're going to start with assembling the leader. Right. We've connected all the rotors and I have them nicely set up in a row. 
And we have the little screws that the rotors themselves came with. So we're gonna use those to set them all in place. On the website, we have instructions on how to do this. There is a little video for every single part. So hopefully we can follow this pretty smoothly. I'm very curious how long it actually takes. For you, it will probably look like a very magical, very quick montage, but I'm just going to suffer through it. an hour and a half it's been an hour and a half but I think she's ready oh the sound of these I love it I love it I love it I love it next up we need to calibrate which means I have to run this command uh. What? I don't know. That's not what you're supposed to do. What now? <gasps> right? Now, obviously that didn't go very smoothly. So instead I assembled the follower as well and thought if I have them both, surely it'll go a lot easier and I can calibrate and teleoperate them smoothly. Here is past Yulia thinking she's got it all figured out. Three hours of installing and calibrating later, we have our two robots and it's also the next day. So right now I can finally start doing the exciting stuff, which is using the software that comes with the Live Robot project to teleoperate and eventually deploy our own models and policies so that the robots can learn by themselves and start acting autonomously. Let's start from the start. Okay. It is day three. Um, there's been a lot of debugging yesterday, but I think we finally got it to work. So I wanted to show you before I fix anything else. Let's quickly walk through Yulia's best debugging tips. A lot of the issues I've been having have had to do with the ports. So I've had to run the find port command over and over again. I've had to assign the ports from my Windows device to the Linux device and reattach them multiple times because every time you unplug and plug back in the the usb connection they reset i had them the other way around at some point i had some issues with the some torque error messages that i tried to debug quite extensively until it turns out that the solution was to plug it out and plug it back in again um, some things have magically fixed themselves overnight when i came back to my computer and started everything again and then it worked just Resetting everything over and over and over until it works seems to be the brute force approach that has been going well for me. Right now, um, I got the teleoperation to work. However, you can tell that they're not calibrated correctly, but I wanna show you that. You will see that they do copy the commands. So like if I move this one, can you see it? They both move. If I move this wrist, it does move, but until here and then this one has more range of motion than the follower which means that i the the default neutral point is not the same between them so they can't follow it exactly this is similar to the potentiometer issue we've had when we were debugging arduino code very typical then for the next joint over this one is close but again i have some degree of movement where they run out so teleoperation working, calibration just needs to be better so that the movements on one robot are the exact same as the movements on the first robot. I will recalibrate them and I will pin them to the table so that we can make it work a little bit better. Okay, so now with the new calibration in mind, let's try the teleoperation again. <laughs> I'm so excited. Oh my god. All right, so if I try to <laughs> I'm doing this. This is so cool. 
drop. <laughs> Hello. Wait, if I like hide this one here, you wouldn't even know. Hello, robot. I could do this all day. Like literally what else is there to do but play with my robots? Ooh. Ooh. I swear I'm an adult professional. I swear. <laughs> what a rush. What a rush. Oh my goodness. So obviously this is extremely cool and we could continue to do this controlling the robot with my leader over here you can of course also connect it to like a joystick control it via code there's so many different ways to go about it but like we've seen uh, the limitations in previous videos you don't want to have to hard code different positions or different strategies for getting to those positions because yeah you want your robot to be adaptable to different types of tasks so for example, you could teach it to pick up this little thing, but then we, when we coded our own robot arm, we could get it to pick up things. And we had different codes for pick it up on your left, pick it up on your right, and deciding which angles those should be. And that's what we called um, direct kinematics. Uh, you could go one step further to make it a bit smarter and implement reverse kinematics, where you just say, this is the position of the box. And with a lot of mathematical formulas, you can deduct the way that the angle should move to get there. So that gets a little bit easier in terms of how much you would have to set up for each movement, but it's still a lot of work and it still doesn't encompass all kinds of things. What if instead of this box, I would like to pick up this thing. It has a different size, so the, the claw movement would have to be different. Uh, what if I want to put it somewhere else? Like there's so many different alternatives and you don't want to code every single one of them which is where machine learning comes in. So by giving this robot a lot of examples of how I want you to move and how I want you to grab things by creating that data with the teleoperation, we can create data sets from which the model can learn and eventually have its own model that uh, runs based on what it sees of the environment. So we can set up some cameras to give it some visual input and presentation of the things around it. And it can determine by itself what's the best movement. How should I move each of the little rotor wrist, wrists if I see on the camera that the box is over there? I want to be able to turn around, head for it, go over there, turn this bit around, open up my big claws and <laughs> you see, even when I'm controlling it, it's still a difficult task. And that's with me, the human being in charge. So you try a, a lot of different alternatives. Well, maybe that's not very fair. Let's do it this way. And eventually it will work. Oop. Thank you. But we want to do this autonomously. I want the robot to be able to figure this out by itself. And that is possible by deploying different types of foundation models on it. We can run it on our computer and deploy it the same way. So then I no longer have to be in control, but the AI model will be able to determine what's the best course of action and perform it. And then we can just tell it what to do. We can have a video or an audio input where I say, pick up the box over there and it's just going to do it, which is amazing and that's what we're gonna try next but i think this video has already been long enough with a lot of my debugging attempts this is how you set up the so arms um, lots of amazing other applications coming we can try to deploy the same kind of models on our very own arm that i had to kind of compare the the big sister and the little sister this is the very, very simple 3D print model that I built with the cheapest server motors on the market. As you can tell, they are quite similar in terms of having the different joints. This one's just a little smaller and uh, less robust. It can pick up less weight, but the software is the same. So we can also try to get the models to work on something like this, but it would just have to be a lot more limited because yeah, the rotors don't have the same capabilities but it should be doable. So we're going to try that, see how the different modular physical hardware inputs vary. But the thing I really want to get to is deploying the models on this. 
So I actually printed out uh, a few of the papers from Pi Zero, from, from physical intelligence. They've developed this amazing visual language action policy that allows you to take in the vision and move the robot based on that. And that's available to deploy through the Hugging Face uh, data sets and models as well. But we're going to read the paper, make sure we understand it, and then see how the implementation works. I'm just so excited. Oh my goodness. Okay, so hope you enjoyed this video. I sure as hell did. And I don't think I've had this much fun in a really long time. And we're only just beginning. The fun's just going to get better and better. So I'll see you in the next video where we're going to start implementing AI. And <laughs> I'll see you there. Bye.